to just praise the Lord and get into the word with you. So I wanted to hop on and just give you a heads up that we had some technological issues this week and we had file corruption and we are unable, to, unfortunately, to put the lyrics on the screen. So I just wanted to give you a couple of ways that you can still participate in worship without having those here. So first of all, if you want to sing along, that is awesome. If you know the lyrics, do that. If you want to look up the lyrics, the two songs that the worship team is playing are Tremble by Mosaic MC and Crown Him by Chris Tomlin. So you're welcome to Google those and look them up. If you know you don't really feel like doing that, there are a couple ways that you can participate in worship still. So number one, I encourage you to grab out your Bibles if you would like. You can flip through and read scripture while they're playing. I know I love to read scripture with music. So that is an awesome way just to still participate in worship. Also, if you just want to listen to the lyrics, just meditate on those or even pray while the worship team is playing. Those are great options for how you can participate in worship without the lyrics. And I promise we are doing our best to make sure that those lyrics are on our Wednesday night service. So once again, I just encourage you to grab out your Bibles, you know, run and grab a cup of coffee if you need to really quick and join us for worship. Welcome friends and thank you for joining with Cornerstone Church this morning where Jesus continues to change lives. I am so excited all that Jesus is doing in our midst. And I believe that he is changing your life every single moment of every single day as well. Uh, as long as you're allowing him to do that, he will change you into something incredible. It's in the process. And what you are today is not what you're going to be in the future. Praise God for that. Uh, it's just fantastic that you've chosen to spend this next half hour or so with us. Got a couple of just really quick announcements. Just met with a group of pastors this morning and we are planning a drive-in National Day of Prayer service. In fact, two services. So on Thursday, May 7th at noon and on Thursday, May 7th at seven o'clock in the evening, you can join over at the All Seasons Arena. The uh, We'll set up a stage underneath the canopy there of that all Seasons Arena building, you'll park in the parking lot, and we'll join together with the National Day of Prayer. Looking forward to that. So it'll be on social media, and you'll see it advertised with KR. We're working with KHRT Radio. They're going to broadcast it over their station. So it's going to be a great, great event. Also, uh, Alpha. Alpha, great, great program. If you want to know more about the Christian faith, it's going to be beginning this Thursday, the 30th, at 7 p.m. online. You can register by going to our church website, www.ecominot.com. 
dot org and just go register there for alpha I encourage you to do that it's gonna be a great time we'll start uh, via zoom everything's gonna be done online you do it from the privacy of your own home it's gonna be great 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 so make sure that you go on connect uh, www.ecomina click the connect box see where it says alpha online click that and follow the instructions uh, cornerstone continues to do three drive-up meals uh, a meal on Wednesday night, a meal on uh, Monday, and a meal on Saturday mornings. Uh, so if you want to volunteer to help on that, please call the church office for that. Uh, that'd be great. And then lastly, speaking of drive-in meals, we have another drive-in worship service happening. Woo-hoo! Say, rejoice. Go ahead. Rejoice. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they'd go yay and get all excited on me, but they're being so cool and relaxed. Um, <laughs> But bottom line, I know the worship team is excited about joining together again out underneath the uh, little canopy out in front of Cornerstone and celebrating and worshiping Jesus with our moms, celebrating moms. That's just awesome. Moms and, and, and just it's going to be a great time. So that'll be two services on Sunday, May 10th, and that will be 9 o'clock and 1030. So plan on coming there and, and if you had so much fun on Easter, which we all did, we expect you to have a lot of fun in that service as well. So with that, let's join together in prayer. Gracious Father God, we thank you for the new things. I just love the scripture. It says morning by morning, new mercies we see. We just see your mercy all around us. We, we see mercy showering on us. We see grace and favor coming to your church and coming to your people. Lord, ways, extraordinary ways to be able to reach out during these crazy times we're living in. Lord, you're bigger than all of this craziness. Lord, there's no one like you. And we want to just acknowledge that today as we join together worship and all the people said, amen and amen.
Thank you, Jesus. We are so honored and privileged to be able to come to you in worship, to be able to, from our hearts, Lord, give you all the praise and adoration that you so richly deserve. We love the scripture passage that says, if I be lifted up, that's you, Jesus, saying this, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. And Lord, you were lifted up on that cross. You were the one who gave your life for all of us, and we do crown you with all that we have to crown you with. And so, Lord, as we now switch over from a time of worship to a time of teaching, and a time where we reflected our hearts, what it is that you call us to invest in ministry and into the life of this church, Lord, we just thank you for leading us and guiding us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, don't you love the church? Don't you love the fact that we have an opportunity to worship you every single moment of every single day? We have a chance to worship our Savior. Lord, you are just amazing. Well, uh, we always take this time in our church service to, uh, to take an opportunity to reflect on some of what you've given to us, Lord. And, and God has given to us richly to enjoy all things. Lord, he's given us our lives. He's given us our jobs. He's given us our families. He's given us just over and over again, thing after thing, gift after gift, talent after talent, resources, jobs, and the like. And so it's a fact that churches don't operate all on their own. They operate within a budget. And... Uh, so far, as far as I understand, for the most part, it takes money to run a budget. And so during this time, uh, I just would ask that we would search our hearts and just ask Holy Spirit what it is that he would have us give to the church. I wanted to share just a, a recent conversation that I had with an individual who was in prayer, asking the Lord that very same thing. And you know what happened? This individual told me that the Lord told them what to do. Just impressed upon their heart that they were supposed to give such and such an amount to the church. And why shouldn't God tell us? I think the biggest thing is we don't ask enough. We just assume or we think, well, I can afford this or I can do that or I can do this. What if God has something totally different in mind? So let's not be afraid to ask the Lord what it is that he'd have us to give. And then you can do one of two things. You can go to www.ecominot.org, go up in the upper right-hand corner where it says give and uh, make your donation there through, through PushPay. Or you can write a check or drop off cash at the church office as well. Any of those are accepted ways. So let's pray. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to give. Holy Spirit, reveal to our hearts how you might want us to bless Cornerstone and the ministry you've called her to. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this morning's message is entitled, How to Live for Maximum Kingdom Impact. It's a whole long phrase, how to live for maximum kingdom impact. And really the gist of the message is, are we just existing? Are we just getting by? Or are we raising up our bodies each day and our hearts and our minds each day and saying, Lord, what is it that you have for me today? How can I influence your kingdom this day, Lord? Give me, Lord, opportunities to influence your kingdom. Lead me beside people that are in need, Lord. Cause me to pray for folks who have needs, Lord. Uh, Lord, all those things, are we living with expectancy each and every single day, or are we just letting our lives go by day by day and going, oh God, just another day, I gotta get through it. Help me to get through this day. That's the wrong attitude, folks. It's not help me get through this day, Lord. It's, Lord, what do you have for me today? What if we changed our attitude to that? I guarantee you we would live into this maximum kingdom impact. And so as I was thinking about this message, I thought, what is a good example that we can look at in the world today to 
living for maximum kingdom impact. And so I was thinking about the sports world. I was thinking about most specifically the Super Bowl. It seems like forever and ago the Super Bowl was on. But nonetheless, you see these well-conditioned athletes, these athletes who train and train and train to be the very best. And why do they train to be the very best? Because they want to win. And ultimately, they want to win the ultimate prize, the Super Bowl. And what happens when they win that Super Bowl? You see confetti dropping from the roof. The roof, the roof, well, whatever. One of those places dropping from above and showering them. And you hear the crowd just going into a ruckus and the accolades, acclamation, all that good stuff going on. And news reporters getting in their face and tell, hey, what are you, what's, what's so exciting about this? And, and the emotions that come out of the players because this is what they've worked so hard to do. This has been their end game, their end result was to win this Super Bowl. And one of the greatest accolades they can receive is from their coach, the one who was with them through the lows and the highs, the, the terrible losses, the wins that were amazing, and all the times in between, their coach saying, you did it, you did it. It brings a smile to their face. Well, I think about this, we as Christians are really no different. We wanna hear on that day, well done, good and faithful servant, by our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus. We want him to say, you've made it, you've done it, and I wanna just tell you how good you've done. That's what, when we stand before him, and one day we will. That's called the Bema seat, the, the judgment seat of Christ. Every Christian will stand before Jesus to give an account of his or her life. How did we do stewarding the resources God gave us? So that's financially. How did we do stewarding the relationships God gave us? Are people in the kingdom? Are people part of God's family? Because we've stewarded those relationships well? Were we somebody who were salty and brought light to the situation? Or because of the way we were, did somebody just not think much of the gospel? So that's how we steward those relationships. And then how did we steward the resources as well? So all those things are really important. And so one day we'll stand before Jesus and we'll give an account. And see, just not thinking about that doesn't make that go away. That is an inevitable fact that is going to happen. And I think one of the most important things we can do is prepare our hearts for that day. When Jesus will say, Matthew 25, 21, the words we wanna hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. So we know that day's coming. So this morning, I want to give you three things that you can do, that you must do, to make a priority to live your life for maximum kingdom impact. You want to make a difference. You want to make the maximum amount of difference in your life. If you do, you got to do these three things over and over and over again. Be intentional about these three things. Number one, pray. Pray and pray again, not just once in the morning. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the evening, and pray all in between. Continue to seek the Lord in prayer. The disciples saw Jesus doing this, and they, he got up early in the morning, long before the crowds were all thronging at his feet, and he said, I must be about the Father's business. So he sought God in prayer. He said, Father, what is it that you have for me today? Help me to prepare my heart for the day that's ahead. So we need to make it a daily habit to reconnect with God all throughout the day on a personal level. Lord, what is it? So we have to be so immersed in prayer that we know God's voice. We hear God's voice. We understand God's voice. And the only way to do that is by spending a lot of time with him. I love seeing this in couples. You know, couples who have been together a long time can almost finish one another's sentences. They can finish one another's thoughts because they know the individual. And God desires that we would know him so well in prayer that we could finish thoughts and sentences. Romans 12, 12 says this, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, 
and being devoted in prayer. Devoted in prayer. Devotion means, when you're devoted in prayer, means it's something that we just want to do, love to do, have to do, and we make it a priority to do. To do. That sounds kind of funny, but we do all of those things. Colossians 4.2 says it this way. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. It's not something we have to do. You have to go to prayer. No, it's not that at all. We're happy to go to prayer. Why? Because of the benefits that we receive? Yes, absolutely. But because we get to grow in our relationship with our Father God. Jesus expects us to produce fruit in our lives. That's part of the anticipation that we look for to that Bema Seat reunion where we're going to give an account. And so since he expects us to produce fruit in our lives, uh, that's evidenced in this next reading. And so I want to read that. It says, Matthew 21, 18 through 22. Now in the morning, when he, Jesus, was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a lone fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, No longer shall there be ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. When the Lord of life spoke those words, the tree died instantly. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, How did the fig tree wither all at once? And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. And all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. The bottom line is Jesus expects fruit. He expected fruit on that fig tree. And because it was not producing fruit, he just said, you're going to be withered and you're not even going to exist anymore. You're taking up space. And you know, we don't want Jesus to think about us in that same way. Now, Jesus died for us. And because Jesus died for us, he expects us to be all in in this plan of salvation for every human being on this earth. Number two, so prayer was the first one. Number two is to listen, to listen. What is God saying to us? It's one thing to pray. It's one thing to give God our to-do list. In other words, God, I need this, 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 and this. Uh, God bless us for and no more. Amen. You know, that's not what God's looking for. God's looking to engage with us in prayer. So we speak and then we get still before God and we listen. What's he saying to our heart? And here's a passage that Jesus gave to his disciples uh, after he shared the parable of the sower. And this is the importance of listening. Mark 4, 23 to 25. If anyone has ears to hear, that'd be all of us, let him hear. And he was saying to them, take care what you listen to. By your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. And more will be given to you besides. For whoever has to him, more shall be given. And whoever does not have even what he has, shall be taken away from him. He starts that scripture verse with he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Take care, be concerned, make it a priority to listen carefully. I love what one person had said. He said, if I knew there would have been a test, I would have paid more attention to what the teacher was saying or to what the person was saying. How often do we let something randomly go through our ears and not pay attention to it. See, when Jesus is speaking in prayer to us or the word is speaking to our hearts, we can't let it just run through our minds and think, be thinking on something else. We have to give it our full attention. Listen with full priority. Make the word a priority in our lives. The truth is, one day there's going to be a test. There is going to be a test. I'm going to just tell you that right up front so you can prepare for it. We're gonna stand before the Lord and he's gonna say, how well did you do with your life? How well did you do with the resources I blessed you with? How well did you do with the influence I gave you at the office or in your friendships or at your church or wherever it was? The test is, 
how well we listen to what Holy Spirit was teaching and leading us to act on. See, it's always about action. God tells us some things, and he doesn't expect us just to listen to it, just to see it, but he then expects us to do the next thing, to act on it. And the more we act on something, the greater it becomes a habit. And so we need to be habitual, make it a habit of acting on the things Holy Spirit is leading us to. If we sit in fear, worried about what others may think, or we sit in fear wondering if we can do what God's called us to do, the longer we sit, the harder it's gonna be for us to act on it. I love W. Clement Stone saying, he was W. Clement Stone founder of Combined Insurance Company, and he always used to say, do it now, do it now. So in other words, as soon as you're inclined to do something, as soon as there's a tug on your heart to do something, as soon as your mind tells you, hey, this is a good thing to do, then do it. Don't think of excuses why you can't do it. Just get out and do it. Nike had a great commercial for that, didn't they? Just do it. Just do it. So lastly, is what I've just said. Take action. Do it now. In Mark 4, we see the sower sowed seeds expecting a harvest. Can you imagine how silly it would have been if the sower just said, you know, I'm expecting a harvest, but I'm gonna sit at home and watch TV all day. Or I'm just gonna go down to the, to the local square and just watch people all day and still expect a harvest. No, you can't do that. Once you've sowed the seeds, then you can expect the, the harvest, right? And so let's read Mark 4, 14 through 20. The sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which had been sown in them. In a similar way, these are the ones on whom seed was sown on the rocky places, whom when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word. But the worries of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And those are the ones on whom seed was sown on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100-fold return. Friends, this is a powerful passage. It should tell us a lot of things. One of the things it should tell us that we can't sit idly by and expect to have a harvest. We must be engaged in sowing God's word. We never know where God's word will land. Will it land on rocky ground? Will it land on hard soil? Will it land on good soil? We don't know that. But one thing we can know for sure that we can control, we can control how often we sow God's word. So sow it every single day because in that way you will receive a big harvest. Sow it like it means something and it does. Every day we sow God's word, it can mean a new person finding a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Every day we sow God's word, it can mean a new person finding hope and encouragement for the day. It can mean a new person who was so discouraged that they were about to give up on life, finding new hope to press on one day, and then God using that person to influence a whole bunch of other folks. So bottom line, we need to continue to be about the Father's business. Friends, where there there is definitely gonna be no harvest where seed is not sown. So we need to continue to sow seeds. If we wanna hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into all the joy of your master, we must pray consistently, we must listen and discern what Holy Spirit is speaking to our hearts, and finally, in obedience, we need to take corresponding action. When we do those things, it becomes a habit, and a habit is a good thing. Let's join together in prayer. Father, thank you for sowing your word in our hearts through people. Lord, there's been people involved in our lives that first sowed the word in our hearts. And Lord, we're thanking you for them right now. We ask that you bless them. 
and you grant them more favor to sow more seeds. And then, Lord, help us to make a decision of quality this morning that we are going to sow your word into all the opportunities that you give us. Teach us how to sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, and learn from you and grow in you and become confident in you. You're our confidence and our strength and our encouragement. And so we can go out then and share this word of life with others. That's what you've called us to do. Go everywhere and sow these seeds. So I thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you in peace, his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. God bless.